Good afternoon and um, welcome to the Zest Wellness webinar. We'll give all of our attendees a moment to join. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for uh, taking some time out of your afternoon to join us for the Zest Wellness webinar. Today we are talking about stress management and what you can do to make each day a little easier. My name is Karen Kushner and I am joined by Nathan Kolar. I'd like to say hi, Nate. Of course, hello everyone. And I'm, I'm excited for this, Karen. Um, before we dive right in to the subject matter, um, we wanted to share how you can get in touch with us at Zest Wellness. Um, we have a blog and then we are also active on social media over on Instagram and Facebook. So feel free to come and say hello on any of those outlets. And today, um, again, we are talking about stress management. We'll start by understanding stress, um, learning what it is, how it manifests in the body. Um, we will talk about the stress prevention model and ways that you can implement that into your lifestyle to help prevent stress. And finally, we will go over a bit about the Zest Wellness Program and the different features that we offer to um, also aid in stress management. So if you joined us for this topic, I think it might be safe to assume that maybe you're feeling a bit um, stressed out. So we would like to start with just a moment um, to follow a one minute breathing exercise. So what we'll do is uh, I'll play the short one minute clip. What you do is inhale as the shape expands and exhale as it contracts. Nathan, maybe you'll have better luck in getting that to play. I'm trying it right now. Yeah, no luck for my end, Karen. <laughs> okay, well, we are going to roll with the punches. Um, what we will do is make this video available um, in our follow-up email to all of you who have attended, and we'll post it on social media as well. So rather than waste some time trying to go over that, we'll make sure that you get it after the presentation. Okay, um, so I am going to now hand it over to Nathan, who is going to walk us through Stress 101. Cool, thank you, Karen, and, and for everyone listening, it's, it's time to rock and roll for us. So as Karen mentioned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first start off with kind of defining stress and really putting things into perspective. And then most of all, we're gonna get into some real nice practical tools that we can use in our daily lives so that when we might be a little bit stressed out we have a list of things we can actually do because how often do we we hear about research but the how is sometimes missing uh, after that research so to begin first of all what is stress so first we'll start with this definition and then we'll kind of break that down so stress occurs simply when your demands on your body or on yourself and on your life, exceed your ability to meet those demands. So it's this balancing act between demands and, and your ability. Now the key thing here to keep in mind is that demands, how we interpret those demands is different for each person. And so there's only one time in this whole webinar we're gonna bring up a math equation but if you have a pen and paper and you write this down, I promise you this will be one of the coolest things that, uh, that you could probably ever learn. There's a really cool equation about stress, and that is this. A plus B equals C. Our activating event, or the stressor, plus our belief equals our consequence. 
And so what stress is, is when we have an activating event like a stressor, depending on how we perceive that, our belief and our abilities, then we get our consequence. So stress is really this balancing act between demands, ability, and our belief, which is that overlapping part right in the middle. Um, and it's important because it's not only what happens to us that matters, but how we take it, how we actually perceive that. Now, in terms of stress and, and kind of the literature, we can see when we, when we look at primary care visits to, to physicians and to doctor's offices, stress is actually related to well over majority of those visits. So if we're looking to decrease that number, we know stress is a great place to start. And then as well, kind of on a bittersweet note, in terms of American research, two thirds of Americans consider work as a significant source of stress. And kind of the elephant in the room and very relevant to all of us who are, who are doing our best to live healthy lifestyles is that most of all, stress makes it difficult to create and to maintain healthy habits. So if you reflect on your life, when is a time that you might have started a new healthy habit and you actually kind of fell off the railing because probably some stress came in your life, some sort of activating, activating event came in your life. What's again that A plus B equals C equation. Now, um, in this webinar, we have a number of attachments. If anyone's interested in really looking at some, some early stress-related research, we have one of our attachments called Stress at Work. Now, one more slide about, once again, putting into perspective stress and the importance of us having this as our webinar topic is that stress is related to a number of the leading causes of mortality in the States. And so think about it, if stress, if, if heart disease is one of the biggest causes of mortality and stress is a major risk factor for heart disease, all of a sudden, I think this light bulb goes off in our mind that our mental well-being is related to the physical. So kind of the intangible now becomes the tangible. Um, a really interesting point that we, we need to realize kind of what's happening in terms of our stress, in terms of our, our state of mind can manifest itself in terms of, uh, of physical illness and physical symptoms. And most of all, for the workplace, why this is relevant and why we see that almost two thirds of Americans are stressed is because the rise of technology. So those emails don't stop at 5 p.m. because you now have email on your phone and when you go home, you take your phone with you. So there's this rise of technology. There's really no end to work these days, is there? And in addition, stress actually has a negative impact on a number of different skills, such as customer service, but also in terms of workplace culture in an organization. So now all of a sudden, it's not only how skilled someone is at customer service, it's also how maybe stressed they are in their life. It's not always about how amazing the workplace or the, the business itself is doing, but it's a matter of how stressed those workers are as well. Most of all, and one of our, our favorite slides of this webinar and, and kind of the root of, of Zest Wellness and, and, and following a wellness journey in general is, is this diagram right here. And so, what this diagram shows is that middle circle, that is that person who, you know, they're not in the hospital by any means. They live a kind of a, a normal life, no observable health issues, but, you know, they might be stressed and they're kind of going through their days day to day. They're not, they're not thriving in their life. They're surviving, but they're not thriving. But if we can find ways to, to become experts with our stress management, we can really bring our lives to a state of thriving, and that's our, our state of wellness. So the World Health Organization has an awesome definition for health and really encompasses wellness with that. And it is that health is not, health is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease. So if you're listening right now, or if you know someone in your life who maybe they're, they're not interested in health and wellness, they're, 
and but at the same time you, you you know you can unlock their potential even more in life that's kind of that, that person who's in that, that middle circle and what we want to do with this webinar and with zest wellness in general is really bring you to that state of thriving and that far right circle that wellness circle so you can you can maximize each day and of course when people feel happy in their work there's also a correlation with a decreased risk of uh, health related issues so once again that kind of intangible relating to the tangible that that state of our minds and our happiness now relating to, to actual health issues so with that being said we had we had some research to kind of put things into perspective and, and make us appreciate how we can uh, always highlight the importance of stress and keep stress top of mind but now what, what zest wellness is most of all known for is also adding the how to all the research that so we can have actual practical tools in our life and so with that being said if you're wondering how are we going to manage the stress in our daily lives we have an awesome six step stress prevention model and so with each step we're going to go through various factors and it's important we have this model and, and, and an awesome kind of quote that might sound a little bit uh, crude, but it's, a, it's an awesome quote. I believe it was by uh, um, Mike Tyson. The, the boxer was that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And so it's so easy in life to, to be like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then when, when kind of stress happens in your life, you don't know what to do and, and things kind of go downhill. But if we can have a model like this and keep this model in our lives, then even if stress comes our way, we know exactly what to do and how we can get over the barrier. Because we know that, you know, even though stress can't be prevented necessarily, we can replace stress. And our goal is to replace stress with really a, a higher level of thinking and living. Because when we do this, we can improve, of course, our focus, our judgment, our relationships. So once again, we're not, we're not just trying to survive, we're trying to thrive. Well, without further ado, let's, let's get into our first step, right? That's why we're all here. And so our first step is to assess our stress. We want to assess our stress because what's measured is managed. We want to figure out what are the demands in our life, and we'll show you how to do this. What are the demands? What, are, what is actually causing us the stress? In addition to that, how much stress are we going through? How can we recognize the signs and symptoms so that we're not living our lives just on autopilot, but we're really having the awareness to, to be conscious in our daily lives? Because when we're on autopilot, it's easy for time to fly by and to us to get stressed, and we need to be aware of our, of our bodily responses. And of course, our abilities, our strengths and weaknesses in terms of, of stress and of course this is all related to the fact that you can't solve a problem until you know exactly what it is so how do we access stress we express <laughs> it's a tongue twister right here we assess stress through a number of different tools and all of these tools are also in the attachments for this webinar our first tool the homes rate social readjustment readjustment scale you actually go through this scale and uh, this scale measures how much change has gone in your life over the past year and then depending on your score it actually shows you how prone you are to getting a, uh, a health related issue so an example of different changes that ask you if you've gone through are um, was there was there a, a death in your life of a, a family or friend or, or someone in the community uh, maybe divorce. It also asks about was, did you get a new job in the past year. So a really cool, just a one-page scale, a few questions, and it just gives a, you a high-level ballpark look at your state of stress. Another interesting survey, only 10 questions, is the Workplace Stress Survey. Once again, this survey is attached, and you fill out this survey, the questions uh, options range from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Depending on your score, it gives you a nice ballpark look at the stress in your life. And of course, these are all related to just being aware. For those who um, 
are possibly in a managerial position, the people leaders. There's also a uh, questionnaire attached once again. Uh, this questionnaire is a little bit longer, but, but nothing too strenuous by any means. And this qu questionnaire measures how much stress you might be putting on those employees that you do manage. So it's helping managers become more mindful. And if anyone's interested in other stress tests, you have an awesome link right here that you can go to. In terms of how much stress might be in our lives, these signs and symptoms, what we can do is in terms of monitoring stress, our physical symptoms, we know that our response, our responses sometimes are our heartbeat, uh, with our, our muscles tense. We also know there could be emotional responses to stress. We might be angry, frustrated, sad. What about our, our behavioral, these, these outward responses that are observable from others? These are all signs and symptoms of stress that we need to be aware of because we might not know that if we don't really look inside to ourselves, if, if we're feeling angry really deep down, we're, we're stressed. And so it's important for us to, to be mindful of that. And of course, uh, a really awesome uh, signature strengths test in terms of our ability for our strengths and weaknesses is uh, the signature strengths self rating scale. This scale is uh, made famous by a man named Martin Sigmund. And uh, it's based actually on a book called Authentic Happiness. It's 24 strengths. It's, uh, it's, it's in uh, the hand, the uh, handout is on this webinar. And it goes through all these different strengths and it helps you relate to them. And so the, the reason for this is because what a lot of positive psychology research states is that if we're stressed, one of the best things we can do is to use our signature strengths in life. And so, for example, a signature strength for someone might be the ability to collaborate. So someone whose signature strength is collaboration, they might actually be stressed in their lives because they haven't been able to use their signature strength lately. So if I'm someone who loves collaboration and I get energy from collaboration, that's my signature strength, and I'm stressed, if I kind of reflect on the last week in my life, last month, it might be due to the fact that collaboration hasn't been present in my life. Could be the fact that another signature strength is given. Another signature strength is helping people. These are signature strengths where if we're stressed, literally doing these signature strengths can really help us put things in perspective and get over that stress hump. So with that being said, those are a number of different tools to assess our stress. And that is step one of our stress prevention model. We need to be aware of what actually stress is in our lives. What are those activating events? Step two of our stress prevention model is avoid. Avoid any unnecessary stress. We want to avoid those demands that don't match our capabilities. One of the ways we can do this is to plan ahead to avoid unnecessary demands. It's all about time management, the ability to say no. One of our favorite diagrams is the next slide, which is something that if, if someone hasn't seen it before, it can be a really mind opening uh, tool for them. And we're actually gonna post this tool on our social media so that everyone can print it off, put it on their computers. And that is, an Eisenhower box. This box is absolutely amazing what it can do for someone's life. What it's showing is that you have on the Y axis going vertical, you have important, not important. On the X axis, you have urgent, you have not urgent. This is all about being aware of what aspect of our lives we're spending our time in. Our top left box, important and urgent we want to we want to do these these are our must do's our green box is our should do's our box on the far left our lower yellow box is our avoid doing the box the bottom right is our worst enemy that is our don't do box 
If we can spend less time in box four and more time in box two, have our time management follow that pattern, that can have an extraordinary effect on our stress management. And of course, we're gonna have this as a resource for everyone to utilize. How this box was actually developed was that Dwight D. Eisenhower was the president of the United States during World War II. As you can imagine, this gentleman had a number of different items and tasks and requests and decisions on his desk during that time. For him to get through that diff difficult period of time, he had to create a tool to manage his time. And so it's too easy in our lives to focus on only important and urgent events, that box number one. Sometimes we're looking too much at our inboxes. Sometimes we're, we're focused too much on things that are top of mind, but most of all are, are deadlines. And, and of course, this is a balance, right? So work, of course, has those deadlines. But what we want to do is we want to set ourselves up for success and try to focus on things that are extremely important, but don't necessarily have a, a deadline on them because they're, they're almost everlasting in a sense. Exercise, planning, relationship building. These are things that are important and not urgent because in a sense, they're almost always urgent. There's no expiry date on them. So once again, we want to stay and keep all of our time as much as possible in quadrant two and avoid quadrant four. If you are in quadrant four, I'm gonna be knocking on your front door to remind you to go to quadrant number two. And some other ways we can avoid unnecessary stress in our lives, one of which is journaling. I think it's surprising how much of a benefit it is to, to journal uh, in our daily lives. Myself, beside my bed, I have a, a notebook and in that notebook, before I go to bed each night, it's a little bit of a, a, a spin on journaling. And that is what I do is I have one positive from the day and one opportunity from the day. And I write those down. And notice it's it's not a positive and negative, it's a positive and an opportunity. Because there's only there's only two options in life: you win or you learn. You don't fail. So I have my positive from the day, what are maybe any wins, and then what are my opportunities to learn from? So that might might be situations where um, I could have done better. That's what I would write in the opportunity part. So never forget about this simple act of journaling. As well, planning, using things like a 10-year planner really puts things into perspective. Even if it's a, a one-week planner, a one-month planner, looking at things from the big picture helps us live our lives with intention and purpose to not sweat the small things. All about stress management. Similarly, having a, a to-do list at the start of the day, get a couple of quick wins in the morning, you know, make your bed, take a drink of water. These are things that really set you out, self up for momentum throughout the day. Organization is always key because clutter can make things, can take away our time when we're looking for various objects. And of course, once again, time management, we want to stay and keep all our time in quadrant or, or, or keep as much time as we can in quadrant two and avoid that quadrant four. Otherwise, the team at Zest Wellness will come after you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and a really cool quote to keep in mind, um, someone who has uh, been a huge personal, uh, almost a hero in a sense, is uh, Brenda Bouchard, and that this quote is, the time to have a map is before you enter the woods. So you don't want to be thinking about this stuff when you're, already in, when you're already stressed out. You want to be thinking about this stuff now so that when you are stressed, you have a game plan. Um, Brendan has a number of, of fantastic YouTube videos. Uh, Personally, I had the chance to meet him in May of 2016. And I swear, when I, when I looked inside his eyes, I thought I saw the Beatles or I saw angels. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was fantastic. And so, um, once again, just avoiding unnecessary stress and having this game plan before the crisis happens 
keeping our Eisenhower box in mind and knowing that we can journal, plan our days, and most of all, keep organized. So step three of our stress prevention model is we want to appraise every situation rationally. So this has to do with the B of our equation. So A plus B equals C. Our activating event plus our belief equals our consequence. And so with our belief, are we really thinking about that stressful event rationally or not? We need to be aware of this. Because if, if a spider is stressful to me, a spider might not be stressful to someone else. So the only thing different between myself and that person is the way we're appraising and believing in terms of our belief in that spider. So really, Shakespeare was right when there's, there's really nothing good or bad, yet our thinking that makes it so. It's too easy for our mind to play tricks on us. The easiest person to fool is ourselves, isn't it? So we need to make sure that we're really being rational and that we're appraising each situation. Of course, easier said than done. And so how do we actually do this? What are some practical tools to appraise? We can become aware of our negative self-talk. How, how often do we, do we talk to ourselves in ways that we would never even think about talking to someone else? Well, sometimes we're the hardest on ourselves and, and, and sadly, sometimes we're the hardest even on our families. And so we, we almost have this, this, this internal negative part that just loves to exaggerate every situation, doesn't it? I know for myself, I have, I have a negative part of my mind. Um, I call it that, that this part of my mind, this person is called Toby. And uh, I, don't let, I, lo I don't let Toby get the upper hand. And so I'm always aware of that negative self-talk that Toby is trying to put in my mind. Toby, you cannot ask for any friend requests from Toby because I'm not letting any of you be friends with him. He deserves zero friends. And so we do know that based on research, the effects of positive thinking are real, right? When we start talking about quality of life and lifespan, depression, our immune response, these are serious benefits that positive thinking has been shown to be associated with. In addition, seeing the big picture is so important in our lives. We have to be astronauts. You know, it's, there's a common theme that astronauts actually, when they come back from their, their missions, they have, they have a totally almost different perspective on life because they've seen the world differently. And so be the astronaut of your life. Know that when someone else posts something on social media, that that's just a sliver of their life. And that social media is only the front window, but not the full house. And so really think about the big picture and not letting the small things get to us. Similarly, any situation we go through, what helps with our stress management is not blaming others. It's yes, someone else, it could be their fault, but at the end of the day, all we literally have control of in our lives is ourselves and in particular our minds. So, at Zest Wellness here, we have a phenomenal resource we'll share with everyone through our social media. And that is this blame responsibility worksheet, where if you can reflect on different situations differently and really put yourself as the, the person with utmost responsibility, that can really help put things into perspective for us. Because what we want to do for our stress management is we want to internalize our locus of control. We want to be the people who are in control, not someone else, not external events. We are the ones in control. Control is one of the keys to stress management. Now, now that we're done our slide with Toby, we never have to see him again because now we are going to our fourth step of the stress prevention model, and that is accept. Accept stress using mindfulness. 
Now, don't get us wrong and always keep in mind, stress necessarily isn't always bad when it's handled correctly because stress can lead to phenomenal personal growth in our lives. As long as we have that perspective of not overstressing about it. And our next slide will give us some tools to do exactly that. Realize, similar to our last slide, we cannot change everything. All we have control of is ourselves and our minds. They can rob us of our money, our credit cards, our vehicles, our watches, but what they can't rob you of is your mind. Now, how do we exactly accept stress? One of the ways is to accept stress, is to name it and tame it. Awareness that if we're stressed, that's just a temporary feeling we're going through. We go with the ups and downs, but stress is not who we are. My name's Nathan, it's not stress. And so we can, we can think about various stressful events, but we don't always have to manifest our thinking. Our thinking is separate sometimes. And so always important to keep that in mind. Name our stress, but keep it tamed. Use our power of our minds. Mindfulness is incredibly amazing in this regard. If we can have mindfulness practices in which we are following our breath, noticing our in-breath, noticing our out-breath, it really brings us back to baseline. And in our social media afterwards, Karen will share the beginning video that we're going to play, which shows exactly this, mindfulness and the awareness of our breath. And we wouldn't be sharing you, this with you if it wasn't robust scientific evidence to prove this. Mindfulness really does manifest itself for benefits that are physical. Blood pressure, cortisol, the stress hormone, our immune function, all of these physical manifestations all can happen through the power of the mind and through mindfulness. And of course, why is stress sometimes okay for our personal growth? And that is because, as we can see from the diagram, that middle part, the eustress, that is exactly where we want to be. It's good that I'm a little bit stressed about my future because that's what brings me to work in the morning. It's good that I'm a little bit stressed about my skills in soccer or football because that's what brings me to the field of practice. And so in the right dose, stress is okay. You know when you, you lose yourself in the moment because you're so focused, that state of flow? We get to that state of flow, that optimum high performance where we lose track of time and we're, we're extremely zoned in. We get to that because there's a little bit of stress that is, that is the fire underneath us. And so, you know, we're talking about stress management, but keep in mind, a little bit of stress is okay. We want to use that stress as fuel. But environmentally friendly fuel. So we're now moving on to step five of our stress prevention model, and that is activate. Activate is step five. Activate your lifestyle to build resilience. What are some coping skills we can have in our life to strengthen our bodies so that we're all Lions. Lions and, and lionesses possibly would be the, the female version of a lion, but we're all lions that have strong bodies to handle any stress that comes our way, to cope with it. How many of us know that when we feel good, our mind sometimes comes with us, doesn't it? Not only does our attitude influence our behavior, but our behavior influences our attitude. 
if we can get into an awesome positive feedback loop of we want to go to the gym or we want to we want to go for a walk or we want to journal because we know it's going to be good for our health we have the attitude and that behavior follows after just doing that behavior will set us up again to go right back to that positive behavior because our behavior can also influence our attitude so how do we activate our lives in terms of stress management possibly mo most most obvious of course but in a good way exercise but we know exercise for the physical benefits but also for the mental a phenomenal book called spark goes over the power of exercise to help you in your lives for learning mental health focus addiction exercise has all of these benefits even just exercising once you can see it can have phenomenal benefits for your blood pressure even walking someone you know i i, I have a yeah i have life goals to to travel the world but one of my life goals is to be a mall walker often you see sometimes in, in malls there those older individuals who go to the mall in the morning and they they walk around the mall sometimes because especially a little bit in the colder times of year though the mall is, is still a nice temperature and so those mall walkers doing that walking hey those are the ones who are really benefiting their health and their stress management an awesome quote is this if all the benefits of exercise were in a pill everyone would take it wouldn't they and so in addition to exercise we have nutrition and awesome we, 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 we can and we will have future webinars on nutrition we just to cover it very briefly right now omega-3 oils are a phenomenal tool that we can all use for our nutrition and even though we're talking about nutrition never forget that nutrition can have positive benefits for our mental health and for things like depression similarly with mental health where we can activate our lives and activate our bodies is through imagery if we can visualize our peaceful state our peaceful states of mind if we can imagine what our futures might look like this even in itself has positive benefits these physical benefits now all of a sudden not only is exercise positive for your cholesterol but so is the way you think if anyone wants just amazing emails in their inbox every morning a quick email it's called notes from the universe and this is the the sign up link and each morning you get uh an email that's like through a little little almost like a little quote that shows um uh it takes you through a guided imagery uh kind of exercise and so it's a nice reminder each morning that the power of mind is real really recommend notes from the universe and of course, activate our lives. The health equation wouldn't be complete unless you brought in sleep. We all know this, but of course, sleep is hard, isn't it? You can all just keep in mind being in a dark room, having consistent bedtimes, help us activate our full lives. That can really help with our stress management. Now is our final step of the stress prevention model. Our sixth step. And what is that exactly? Attune. Attune to others by building our support network. It's kind of interesting how our the webinar before this one was all about relationships and, and social health and how that now comes back in with this webinar because we're really following a holistic view of health. And so for stress management and a tune, we need to be proactive in building our support network. If our support network is a bridge or a ladder, each person we add to that network is another rung on our ladder. But it, of course, it's, it's tricky, right? Is it, is it the, the chicken or the egg? Do, 
do I have strong social relationships because I have good friends or, or should I be a good person first? Well, you can never go wrong with, with being a, a good person and that's exactly where our next slide is all about. We have these deep needs to, to feel belonging in our lives. And so that's where a tune really comes from. We can manage our stress by feeling a sense of belonging with others. It gives us a sense of self-worth that we belong to a community or group. Always keep in mind the mental and the physical are related. If we're mean to others, hostile, we not only hurt ourselves emotionally, but also biologically through things like blood pressure. What if you neglect someone, that person feels frustrated, they feel stressed. Now it's harder for them to keep healthy habits. So now they're losing the motivation for habits. So keep in mind this connection between mental and physical. Most of all, how do we a tune we call a friend the simple act of calling a friend helps us establish these strong social relationships that are not based on quantity but quality so being proactive and calling a friend is a serious step we can take just connecting with others helps us with things like our happiness hormones oxytocin oxytocin and dopamine Joining a support group is extremely valuable. There's an awesome website, an American website called healthfinder.gov for support groups. Odds are if you're going through a health struggle, you're not the only one and support groups can sometimes be the best things someone can do. We have in our, our, our brains what are called mirror neurons. They're the reason when someone sneezes, you sneeze after and so we need by by being attuned to our social support network we're really being aware of who we surround ourselves with jim rowan said that you become the five people you surround yourself with the most so choose wise, wisely you know we, we've hear secondhand smoking but what about secondhand stress so really being aware of those in our lives who are stressed can bring us down, but our odds of being happy increase if those around us are happy. In addition, life's not perfect. We're not perfect. Toby is definitely not perfect. And so arguments and, and situations come up, but it's always important to learn how to argue. Arguing can be healthy as long as there's no personal jabs that are taking place. Arguments can be great when there's follow-up afterwards. Arguments are great when there's still when there when there is written agreement happening afterwards. How often do we do we get an argument and we just get so so lost in adrenaline that we say things we regret? Learning how to argue and always just watching what we say. Controlling that adrenaline. Controlling that Toby in our lives. And of course, to bring once again our favorite diagram, our Eisenhower box, we need to, we need to allocate time to this. We need time to call a friend. We need time to join a support network. We need time to actually surround ourselves with positive people. We need time to keep in mind positive and healthy arguing. How we do that is we eliminate or lessen that Q4 from our lives and add to that Q2, that relationship building quadrant. Things that are important but not urgent and they're almost essentially infinite, infinitely urgent. So with that being said, Karen, and we just brought everyone through the six steps of the stress prevention model. And I know you have some awesome slides to continue this webinar for our guests. Absolutely. Thank you, Nathan, so much.
So um, we all just heard some excellent information from Nathan on, first of all, why we should make stress management a priority, um, and then also how to make some changes in your life by following the stress prevention model. Um, and that is what brings us to the Zest Wellness Program, which is designed to help um, support your stress management efforts by helping you build health, healthy habits. So a bit about the Zest Wellness Program offered by um, Colonial Group International. Um, we pride ourselves on being a comprehensive well-being program. So we set ourselves apart from traditional wellness programs that revolve solely around health metrics um, to our offerings that support um, total well-being. So mental, physical, social, financial health and so forth. Um, one of our largest components of that, of course, is stress management. So our main stress management tool um, is called Will, and you can find this in the program section of your online account um, or in the Zest Wellness app. And what we have here are three different um, courses that can help with your mindfulness. Uh, mindfulness is kind of a buzzword right now and maybe you're interested in kind of implementing some yoga or meditation techniques into your day but you're not sure where to get started so these three will courses are set up for just that um, you can choose from emotional intelligence mindfulness or yoga and um, complete the course that will suit your lifestyle best um, we also have um, habit tracking, social support, and other programs. So next um, is the healthy habits section. Now you'll see here we have 13 um, different offerings that all relate to stress management. Uh, this doesn't even begin to touch all the healthy habits relating to uh, nutrition, sleep, and the other pillars of well-being. Right here, you'll see um, screen captures of the healthy habits that I choose to track every day to, uh, to manage my own stress. So something that I enjoy is uh, using aromatherapy or relaxing candles. Um, I like to wind out um, the, at the end of the day with a cup of tea, um, a gratitude journal, which Nathan also mentioned that, that he does um, on his bedside table. And then my favorite one is time with pets. So I find that if I'm ever feeling stressed or anxious, uh, a walk with my dog is the best thing that I can do to wind down a bit. Um, so these are my healthy habits. You choose the ones that are most appealing to you that have the biggest impact. Uh, Nathan, are there any on here that you turn to every day? Yeah, um, actually my... Uh... My favorite one, it's not on here, but it's uh, it's did you set your number one priority for mm -hmm. the day? And uh, I do that because if I can just crush that big domino for the day, and, and nine times out of ten that's related, of course, during the week to, to something at work. But if I can if I can get that big domino rolling, uh, man, oh, man, does that ever set myself up for success for the rest of the day? Definitely. And that speaks to as well kind of. Um how different um, aspects of things that we can do to take care of ourselves impact our stress. So if you knock off your number one priority for work, boom, your stress levels go away. So, you know, it doesn't have to be just the this set of healthy habits here. There are a lot of different things that you can do for stress management. Okay, and then uh, the final Zest Wellness uh, programs that we'll talk about today are the Nutrition and Sleep Guides. This is a callback to the Activate step of the stress prevention model. Um, so Nathan just went over that. Even though we might not think of nutrition and sleep, um, first when we think about our stress levels, we know that they're really foundational to, um, to keeping stress at bay and making sure that you prioritize your health. So these um, programs are also found on the programs page. And what's really great about them is that you can personalize them to your needs. So um, especially relating to sleep, maybe you're having trouble um, quieting your mind. Maybe your, your mind is going in a million different directions when you're trying to lay down to go to bed. 
So you can select that as um, the sleep area you'd like to improve and you'll get different um, tips and reminders right to your account that are going to help you quiet your mind at night. Um, for example, it might suggest that you journal for five minutes every night before you go to bed to kind of get those thoughts out of your head and onto paper so you can set them aside and go to sleep. Um, the same is true of the nutrition plan. So no matter where you think your um, your nutrition weakness is, you can choose from six kind of uh, different categories to get custom tips uh, to your account. So that wraps up um, the content that we had and the overview of um, some of the different Zest Wellness offerings that you can use to make your day a little bit easier. Um, we do have a few minutes remaining, so if you have any questions, please feel free to share them in the question section or the chat section, and we'll do our best to answer them here. If we don't have time, um, we can reach out to you individually. Um, also, this webinar has been recorded and will become available um, within 24 hours um, of closing it out. If you'd like to refer back to the slides, we also have those handouts available, the different um, questionnaires and surveys that you can take. Hey, Karen, as we're, we're waiting for, for our, our, a couple of questions to come in here, um, I just wanted to, I, I found it interesting that, that both you and myself, uh, and I'm sure some of our other listeners as well, really both value the, this aspect of journaling. Definitely. I think it's very um, underrated. It, it can sound kind of, um, I don't know, new agey. Oh, oh, I just have a gratitude journal and that helps me uh, <laughs> to keep my stress at bay. But it's really remarkable what that can do. Um, from a gratitude perspective, um, what I like to do is write down at least one thing, sometimes three things every day that I'm grateful for. And what that does is it shifts your perspective. So you can have the worst day, um, you know, nothing's going right. You have a flat tire, you forgot your lunch at home. And, you know, it, at the end of the day, if I think, hmm, do you know what I spent a really great 10 minutes at lunch going for a nice walk in the sunshine um, to the cafe because I forgot my lunch. Um, you know, just that one positive moment, going back over that um, lets you visualize what made you happy that day. And it keeps, um, keeps gratitude at the forefront instead of kind of the negative things. Do you, do you focus on anything particular in your journal or do you just kind of stream of conscious at the end of the day? Oh, great question. So it, it's definitely um, nothing specific, but, um, and, and, and of course I, I like, so I, I got this from someone else. So someone else told me to this journal and I, I thought, okay, I'll just, I'll just try doing it. It's, it's, it's almost scary when, or, or intimidating because when someone says journaling, they think, oh, I have to start writing, you know, the next Harry Potter novel or something like that. But journaling can be, can be as simple or, or as user friendly as a, a positive and negative before or a positive and an opportunity before bed. But just for myself, just kind of really highlighting the positive or opportunity. So not positive and negative, positive and opportunity because two options win or learn so really trying to take that that word failure out of the vocabulary mm. that's awesome yeah i think it, yeah it's all about shifting your perspective and journaling uh definitely helps with that 
So I see a couple of questions coming through. Um, the first being, do you ever offer stress management events? Um, so the answer to that would be, uh, we, we do offer kind of um, large scale events. For example, you may have heard of our Deepak Chopra event that we just held um, in June in the Cayman Islands. And again, that kind of focused on total well-being, which is um, one of the best ways that you can keep your stress at bay. Again, that activate section of the uh, stress prevention model. But um, in terms of smaller scale events, what we could offer are um, lunch and learns relating to stress management. And again, how does this wellness program can be used to aid in, in stress management. So if you are interested in a lunch and learn, um, you can let us know. You can contact us at this um, email address here on the screen, zestwellnesscgi at colonial.bm, or you can reach out to your local wellness coordinator to get that scheduled. And I'll just jump in on that one as well. A couple months back, we, we did a workshop with a client that was all about what a cup can teach us about happiness. And so we, uh, we gave all the participants in the room a cup, literally a plastic cup, and we took them through a number of, of different exercises to help us with our perspective. And, and so, for example, one of the exercises was everyone filled a cup with water. And we talked about when we look at that cup with the water, is that cup half full, half empty? So we're really learning about the difference between, uh, between being positive uh, in our lives in terms of our, our thinking. So, so workshop, clients love workshops like that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so again, if, if you'd like to bring a workshop like that or a lunch and learn um, related to stress management or any other topic that you feel like your employee base um, would benefit from, feel free to email us here or contact your local wellness coordinator. Okay, another question. Um, do we have any webinars on depression? So, uh, so far, we have not offered any webinars specifically focusing on depression. This is our second webinar. Our first was based around um, social support. Um, but I will definitely take your suggestion and Nathan and I can work to put a webinar together relating to depression. Um, we would love to bring in a subject matter expert for that because um, I know that I'm certainly not an expert and I don't want to speak for Nathan, but I don't believe he is either. So we would like to provide you um, with, with the best subject matter expert that we can for that. If you have any other suggestions for webinar topics, again, email us or you can pop them into the chat here. And then, okay, one final question. Um, what is your best way to motivate yourself? Uh, Nathan, if you want to give that one a first go. Oh man, this is, I love, oh my gosh, I love this question. Um, yeah, you know what, I, um, the way I, this is actually, I don't know, maybe, maybe try to, to go vulnerable for a second, but uh, the way I try to motivate myself is that, uh, I, I, you know, I, I read and, and watch a lot of, you know, YouTube videos and, and books and whatnot, and what try to motivate me is, is not, not that I want, not that I'm looking for success in, in terms of monetarily, in terms of a, a, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, um, but in terms of trying to motivate myself to reach my goals so that I can meet those people who helped me in my life and really in person say thank you to them. So um, that gentleman I brought up earlier, Brendan Bouchard, to, to meet someone like that in life and you, you watch this person on YouTube, you read this person's books, um, to meet that person in, per, in, in you know face to face and just say thank you to person, that's the the, the motivation for myself. Wow, that's amazing and very deep. <laughs> we're, we're like the ocean; we go deep. <laughs> well, thank you for that answer and. Um, so we've reached the one hour mark. So we're going to go ahead and close out the webinar for this afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us.
Um, I hope that with the, the information that Nathan presented today, you're able to take some of these stress management tools and implement them into your life to make your day a bit easier. Um, Nathan, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close out? Yeah, just to emphasize to people that um, we have all, all those have all those different surveys and whatnot or attachments on this webinar, and then we're able to post some of the resources on our social media page as well. Great. Okay. Well, thank you again, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everyone.